hey what's up guys welcome to my channel and today in this video we are going to dockerize our development environment so that it is easy for anyone to run this application on their machine and also contribute to the development now i have already set up the application using docker and i'll show you how my stack looks like right now these are images and this is my container so i have set up php i'm using the server side up php 8.2 fpm nginx image i have a mysql container for my database i have a node alpine image running which is responsible for the dev build of the assets that i want you know it will compile it and I have a Redis here as well because if I need any cache, I will be using that. So this is the stack and I will step by step show you how we can dockerize our entire development environment in this video. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So to dockerize our development environment, the first thing that we will need to do is create a Docker Compose file. So I'll go to my PHP storm. Over here, I'll add a docker compose file. Now I don't need the docker file. I had done that previously, but I'm just deleting it so that you know that whatever I'm doing doesn't depend on a docker file. So I have a docker compose YAML. The first thing that I will do is mention the version. Now I need to define services. In here, the most easiest service to spin up is obviously Redis. So we will first add that, although it won't directly have any impact per se. I'll delete the data as well because I was trying, I mean, I have already done the setup previously. So that's where I have all those stuff. Now the Redis service will pull an image generally speaking redis is quite a stable thing so uh, we can potentially you know you get the latest image but to maintain the best practices what i will do is um redis da, 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 tags We can use the latest one. And to be honest, I had used that. But here we have Redis 7.2. So maybe I will use that instead of the latest. Okay. So what I will do is the first thing in here, if we have a custom Docker file, then we can mention that. Or if we are using the image directly, which is going to be the case for us because um, you know, we are not going to modify the doc, uh, Redis image in any way. So we can just mention this, okay? And then I like having a easy name for my container. So this is something which I will add, okay? Now, the next point is quite important, which is every service will typically be used by your application so it will need a port so how do we do that so in the ports i'll say that the, on the host it will be available on 63790 and on the container also 63790 will be exposed so the port from the container 63790 will be directly mapped to this port on my machine which is on my host mac Okay, and last thing is if you need to store the volumes, uh, store the data of Redis in any case, what we can do is have Redis data map to data. Okay, and that's about it. Now, if I now run Docker Compose up, it will first download the image because I don't have that 7.2 I had the latest one 
and then it started. So if I go to my Docker desktop, okay, it will show you that this is running. And on my image side, you will see that on Redis, I have this latest version as well as 7.2 and I don't need the latest version anymore because I am using 7.2, okay? And it is a good practice to always use the precise version numbers. And the reason is if you, know, you are building something and you are your application is compatible with one specific version, if you do a latest and you do the build, it will pull the latest one. And if there are any breaking changes, then it doesn't work for you. And hence, it is always a best practice to define the exact version, okay? So my Redis is kind of working. One thing which I would like to do is because I have defined a volume, so I will define Redis data like this, okay? So what will happen is whenever I run that, if there is anything in this data folder, that volume will be available over here and it will be persisted, okay? Now, Redis is up. Why don't we also create our MySQL service? I'm going the opposite way because, you know, let's first have everything in place um, as the supporting thing for you know, the main application to work. So I'll have a MySQL service. Image, let's look at that. I mean, I know it is going to be this MySQL 8.0, but I'll still you know, show you the whole process so that you are aware how things are configured. Okay, so I'm going to the tags. Um, it's Debian, Oracle, 8.3. Hmm, that's a bit interesting because I think I was pulling a very heavy MySQL image. This is 8.0 created two months ago. If you see, it is a 622 MB image. I just wonder. How is that even possible? Why there is such a big difference? Okay, let's try. I know it works on 8.0, but why don't we try this one? So MySQL 8.3, okay. Now for MySQL to run properly, I think here we have a documentation. It expects certain environment variables, okay. I'll just try to see otherwise yeah environment variables my sql root password okay there is my sql database my sql user my sql password and do note that there is no need to use this mechanism to create the root password that user gets created by default uh, this is optional set to empty value so if you are willing to run your root uh, with a root pass uh, with a blank password then you can do that but I, I am not going to do that um, what I will rather do is use the configurations from my base ENV because you know we all have our ENVs and I'm not in the mood to show you my ENV but you generally know right I can show you the ENV example actually yeah so you see we will al already have these variables right inside our dot ENV so we can literally use them so in, after the image let's say we have our container name which is labmx db then obviously we need to map the ports because we need to tell that hmm, um, 3306 of my machine will directly map to 3306 of the container i have dbing and i'll stop that Okay, because that also runs on 3306. And what else? We need to set the environment variables, right? Environment. And then I will have uh, 
I'll have first the database. Okay, uh, let's have them one shot database. Then I'll have username. Then I'll have the password. And I'll have the root password in this particular sequence. Okay, so once this is done, I know that my env has a variable called db underscore database. If you see the dot env, we have that. Then we have, let's add them first, user, right? So it will be db username, db password, and root password can be the same. Okay, this is done. Now, as we have done for Redis, we need to persist our data through volumes. So I'll define volumes and I'll say anything inside my data slash my SQL data maps to where lib my SQL. And what will happen is then this folder will have the entire thing from this folder so I'll be able to see all the bin files and stuff okay this is done this shows 8.1 why don't I go ahead and change it to 8.2 okay. because I'll be using the PHP 8.2 version as well okay um, fair enough everything is fine so we have our MySQL we have our Redis if I shut down my containers and do composer up again, it is going to pull up the MySQL image. Now I'll try and see if this works. Ideally it should, it will save me a lot of disk space. However, I typically don't use the Docker container for my database. I enjoy using the um, DBing thing but I wanted to show you that this particular thing is kind of ready and they're available. So yeah, ba, ba, ba. MySQL done, start process, right? This is running. You need to sh ensure that your processes are running because if something fails, the container will stop. I can see both of them are running. Now the last one before, rather let's now do the PHP one, the node, Thing we can do it later so for the PHP service first of all I'll do PHP and we need an image so I'll go to docker hub and server side up PHP so it's a great image which is uh, tweaked for production it can handle multiple types of php projects and i really love this docker image as a starting point so yeah i highly recommend using it now what i will do is because i said that i'll be using 8.2 8.2 i know i need the fpm and Ginx. let me see yeah this is a one 72 ish thing okay so we will copy that use that over here i think there is a little more specific versions as well nginx alpine 2.2.1 okay i can use that it will be a little more specific or let me see which version I was using. There's not ma any major difference 2.0.2. .2. Okay. So I'll just use that because I already have that image just to save the time. Otherwise, yeah, I could have upgraded as well. This I will do lab MX PHP kind of keeping with the convention that we are following ports. Well, my port 80 is not going to 
um, I'm, I'm not going to give away my port 80. So what I will do is I'll do port 8080 to map with the containers port 80. I'll need a volume. This one is important. On volumes, I'm going to say that this particular folder kind of maps to my var www html because the container that we are using expects that the entire code base is here now the server side up image requires certain environment variables um, i am not going to run the container on ssl mode right now so i'll just put that as off you can look at their um, documentation but yeah just just so that you are able to quickly do that just know that you will have to do this and this is something which i had to configure i will be very honest i didn't understand what the problem was but i will tell you what was happening if i don't do this my application starts and then it it starts complaining saying that it doesn't have the correct permissions to write anything inside the storage folder now i did quite a few hacks here and there but they were hacks and i was not um, willing to use that for the long term uh, so in one of the issues i figured out and especially this was on a linux because i was initially trying it on a linux machine i could see that you know the folder permission was a bit different so now based on one issue what i understood is i need to put these things over here and then what happens is when the container is created it will kind of use this uh, versions okay so yeah that's what my understanding is it is working and it is working properly because i'm not playing with the file permissions okay so these are the three environment variables that i'm passing and what i will do is I will have one more property over here which defines that my PHP service depends on MySQL, it depends on Node, it depends on Redis. Okay. This is important because typically I would want that when the PHP application is ready, oh sorry, my bad, I don't have the Node thing as of now. So yeah, when I want to say that, you know, one of my service depends on another one i can do this for example i may choose to uh, have php my admin also running over here and if i want to do that obviously the, the php my admin should only start spinning up once the mysql is up so that's that's you know how we typically would want to work okay all right so now it's time to do compose up redis db and now the server side up image everything is fine let's see if we are able to load our application on 8080 yes it does load however you must understand that my application depends on the assets which are being compiled by wheat and we are not compiling them right now and that's the reason we require node so let's go to docker hub and look for node this should be the official one let's look at the latest uh, stable version um, I'm, I'm looking at alpine these are smaller um, images alpine 3 1 okay we have 319 so when i tried it was 318 but this is fine as well 18 hours ago okay so let's go to our docker yaml after php node image i we'll have this container name we we'll have lab mx node now let me look at the so what, what needs to happen is i will be running certain commands on the image 
and I will need the working directory to be set on that particular thing. Um, so maybe I'll do working directory as slash user slash app. Okay. And I'll set a volume. I'll say that anything which is in the current folder maps to user app. Okay. Now, one more thing. I have a feeling I can use something like scripts to do um, the npm install. But what happens is, let's say if you have just cloned the package, you you will not have the node folder, node modules folder. So at that point, you will need to install them. Now, what I I could see is I can't run multiple things almost like npm install and an npm run dev. Okay, so I when I first started the container, I um, did this npm run install and then the next time I did the npm run dev and now because I have my node modules, I am able to run this properly. I'll see if I can find a proper mechanism where I can do the install, but it will only work when the node modules is not there or maybe something else. Okay, now after that, we will typically run the stuff on 5173, uh, 5173. So I'll map my machines port to that as well. But with this, it will not work. Okay, I'll show you why. I'll do this. It's pulling the image. Everything is working and now if I refresh, okay, it does say that the table doesn't exist. Let me try to get that. I'll do docker exec php bash. I can get inside it. No. Why? What happened? Docker ps. I have. lab mx php yes okay it's an underscore i'm doing a dash fair enough so i'm here php artisan migrate seed okay so the database is created tables are populated but it is still not working why because i looked at it and what i found is in the head it is trying to get it from localhost 001 something something right so this was not working so what i had to do was inside my vite configuration i had to add a block of code which tells the laravel's vite configuration about where the assets are available so server http S is false. We are not doing an HTTPS. Host is true. Port is 5173. That's what we have configured in YAML as well. And the host is now localhost. Okay, so this is what I did. Now, can you see this is working? And login. If I log in, I'm able to get into the dashboard and over here I can see the seeded data as well. So yeah, I mean, this is what my entire setup is right now looking like. I'm pretty happy with what I have, but yes, there is definitely potential to improve. I have plans to add PHP my admin and even MailPit to have the email service as well. And then maybe I will try to configure the traffic container so that instead of this local host 8080 we are able to play with domains okay so yeah that's about it guys that's what i wanted to cover in this video about the docker setup for this particular application i hope you are able to understand the concepts of the docker setup that i have done feel free to comment below if you have any questions you can comment or you can join the discord server and you can 
directly ask questions over there as well and yeah that's about it thanks for watching bye